So unless you have enough money to buy a comprehensive policy, uh, you end up taking some sort of risk and you could still end up being denied coverage for something. So on the other side of the argument, a nationalized healthcare system would form part of the background against which you are able to develop and pursue your own conceptions of the good life. After all, life is a condition of being free. You have to be alive to be able to live your life freely in accordance with your own conception of the good. And I think that most people would rather have that choice uh, available to them than a choice between competing insurance policies. One final thought, uh, which I think is relevant. Uh, Ron Paul believes that we should deregulate the private sector entirely. Deregulate the banks, corporations, industries, and basically everything. Uh, he argues that government regulations don't really work and that if we just deregulated everything, the free market would regulate itself <laughs> and corporations would take responsibility for their actions. As he puts it, the regulations are tougher in the free market because you can't cheat or lie or pollute. <laughs> what I think uh, Ron Paul is assuming here is a particular conception of human beings as always acting rationally in their own self-interest. A company would refrain from dumping pollutants into Lake Erie, for example, not because it's wrong or because they're not allowed to, but because the company would recognize that polluted waters would be harmful to its own self-interest and that its image would be damaged in the eyes of consumers and that this would hurt its profit. So the company doesn't need the government to tell it not to pollute. It will regulate itself in accordance with its own rational self-interest. First of all, I think that the events leading up to the 2000, uh, 2008 financial crisis demonstrated well enough that people and, and corporations don't necessarily act rationally in their own self-interest. Uh, most people looked at 2008 and thought, uh, this is what happens when we don't regulate Wall Street. However, Ron Paul looked at it and said that 2008 was the result of too much government regulation. The big banks and investment firms uh, continued to act the way that they did because they knew that whatever happened, they would get bailed out, bailed out by the government. They were just too big to fail. Now, I have my doubts about this explanation, and if you read Michael Lewis's book, The Big Short, you'll see that most of the people involved in the events leading up to 2008 didn't actually think that they would have to be bailed out. Uh, because they thought that what they were doing made perfect sense because they thought that they were actually passing the risk on to others, uh, which wasn't the case. Of course. Nevertheless, if we grant that people would always act rationally in their own self-interest if the private sector were completely deregulated, an interesting problem arises. As I mentioned above, libertarians argue that the poor and uninsured should seek charity from voluntary associate associations and private individuals. But according to the libertarian conception of human beings as rationally self-interested, giving to charity would be a completely irrational act. Why would anyone make a one-way exchange on the market by giving something to someone else and not receiving anything in return? That would be completely irrational. So Wolf Blitzer's hypothetical man in the coma ha has absolutely no chance. The hospital will turn him away because he has no insurance, and private individuals will not help him out because there's nothing in it for them. And yet, according to libertarians, he's still completely free and society has done everything that it should do. This, I think, is what makes the libertarian conception of liberty so frightening. And that's the end. So, Thank you. So, um, are there any questions? Comments? Are there any libertarians here? <laughs> Just, okay, good, so, good. Um, did you want to add anything or, or, or ask any questions about that? Um, I know that, uh, yeah, I mean, that some of those examples were the extreme, and then also the, the association where it seems like it's irrational. I mean, where you get the example of charity be irrational is that sometimes it's in your best interest to be charitable to others because they, uh, didn't have the means to, you know, contribute back to society, or, you know, that might be your gardener that you're looking out for. But I don't know. I, I mean, I was once a libertarian, I, and I, I've changed my stance on many of the. After reading more on it, uh, I, I went to be more, uh, I guess, a social type of libertarian, where there's right. the different aspects of the, the, the true libertarian in, in, the, in the sense of. Uh, pieces, 
others you know that I've read that where the economic theory does sound good in practice and you know the examples that they use um, you know but I mean I've never heard some of those examples I was like oh my goodness we're gonna you have the right to sell yourself as a slave and things like that and, well, that kind of does extreme, scare uh, yeah, consequences does. of pursuing the principles to their you know more extreme ends. Uh, certainly, I don't think Ron Paul would actually propose you know being able to sell our organs. I don't think right. if he were president, not only would he not probably propose it, it, it he wouldn't be able to pass no, any legislation pass. on that. But I mean, it is interesting to sort of know I think what exactly he means by liberty, yes, and whether or not there are other uh, you know alternative conceptions of liberty. Um, and whether Ron Paul, of course, has, you know, the, the ultimate uh, conception of liberty. Yeah, thanks a lot. I didn't mean to put you on the spot or anything. But no, no, it. I mean, I, I did run for office as a libertarian, oh. as, a, as a, a big L. Yeah. Okay. And then I moved to a small L. Yeah. And then um, now I consider myself no party affiliation, where I, I as a free man, I can choose right. my associations and, you know, yeah. Um, uh, there is something very appealing in libertarianism, which is, of course, liberty. I mean, yes, and, and the, I think the idea, the ideal of liberty, but that, you know, carrying it to the extreme of, you know, that I could sell myself in, to slavery, which would be a contradiction to liberty. You know, right. but I, well, I would be free to do that in a libertarian. Yeah. Seen as an extreme test case. Yeah, extreme yeah. test case. Yeah. An sure, extreme yeah. test case. You know, but then some of the other ones were the example of pollution, where in a libertarian type of society. If I did uh, something wrong to, in, to an individual, like I could prove that the pollution affected me, then I would have every right to go after him at, in a civil type of thing and receive compensation right. or whatever in that way. You know? Right, so there would be so, no regulations in advance, or I think uh, right. Ron Paul refers to them as prior constraints. Right. The prior constraints, constraints come afterwards. So, constraints right. come afterwards, so we couldn't protect anyone from being stupid, yeah. but if they did something stupid, then they, we could make them pay for their crime. And right. it may not be criminally, but it may be civilly, you know, yeah. a civil type of court. So I, I definitely have a, a few lines of, of um, challenge to the book, that, which I think ends up we're, we're in the same place. But I, I do want to discuss the uh, consistency coherence thing. Mm. Um, but let me just uh, say real quickly a, a, a few different um, one, there's, um, I think, I think of this is the Rousseau argument. Um, Rousseau talks about justice, and he makes a really nice point in the uh, social contract about how justice requires both liberty and equality. And when we think about the main line of the Western philosophical tradition, I think most of our thinkers have tried to, in presenting ideas about what justice entails, make a reconciliation between justice and equality. What I find striking about libertarianism is that it tries to get almost all of justice out of liberty alone. Um, so, so that's one issue that I want to, uh, that's one line of discussion. Another is, um, uh, an argue, when I was a, a, a student, I wrote my, my uh, senior thesis on basic need. And so I spent quite a bit of time looking at John Rawls and his notion of um, primary goods. And I spent quite some time uh, struggling with Robert Nozick mm -hmm. and becoming familiar with libertarianism and, and trying to uh, uh, negotiate their objections. And one argument that proved important to consider was could libertarianism explain the behavior of parents, in particular of mothers? Right. And I found that very interesting, and, and, I, and that's a nice argument I, I'd like to put to people. Um, if, if it's all about um, contracts and liberty, uh, how do you explain your mother? Right. And how do you explain who you are, which is largely a result of your, your, your mother's um, efforts on your behalf? So that's the second line of, of consideration. We have the Rousseau argument about, well, it's not just equality, it's a balance. Mm -hmm. And we have the mother argument, which you can't, if you can't explain mothers, then what the hell are you doing? Right. Now my third argument is the problem of coherence. Okay, so does it make sense to build your policies on life out of just this one value. Um, and I suggest that just as libertarianism might appear to be incoherent, because it can't 
explain a wide range of things because it returns to a value that has ultimately limited scope and needs help from other values in order to help us negotiate life.